Hello, and welcome to Live Like the World is Dying, the Now It's a YouTube show. I'm Margaret Kiljoy, I use she and they pronouns, and I'm here to try and teach people what I know about individual and community preparedness. And there was a mosquito that kept landing on me while I was trying to record that. This is just a hydration pack. This is not going to really work as a bug out bag. It's very good for like day hikes and stuff because it has the hydration in it. And it does have pockets, but probably this isn't going to work. I lived out of this backpack for several years. This backpack worked for me when, whenever my van would break down and I would want to keep moving and not stay with my broken down van. However, there's a major disadvantage that I'm no longer using this as my bug out bag. And the reason is I injured my chest with this bag because it's so big that you can overload it if you're not smart, like I'm not smart, and then injure yourself, especially if you swing it onto your back. You can rip the cartilage between your sternum and ribs, and it's called costochondritis and it took me years to recover from. It's a three-day assault pack style bag, and it comes with an enormous amount of pockets, and as you can see, there's molly everywhere. But it's just kind of big and formless, and I, I don't like it all that much. This is not the style of bag I would use for bug out purposes, personally. It's a little bit big to fit into certain spaces also. It does have some features that are incredibly handy. It has a very strong reinforced handle, and it has multiple handles, including on the sides, which comes into play more often than you would think. And it has place down below on the bottom that you can put webbing straps if you want to attach a sleeping bag or something like that to the bottom. Molly is incredibly useful, even if when the bag is sticking all the way out, extra stuff cantilevering it out even further just becomes less useful. This is my everyday carry bag. It's a case logic bag. They no longer make this exact model, but they make basically the same thing. And I really like this. It doesn't have Molly, which some people say will help be gray man and no one knows that you're prepared and whatever, but I think that's exaggerated of a concern. I mean, look at me, look at me. I, what, what am I gonna do? Um, people aren't gonna be like, oh, there's a, totally normal girl right there. Hello, fellow cisgendered men. I too share your interest in firearms. And women are among the genders I'm attracted. No, I don't very, do a very good job of passing for normal. However, this bag might help you do it. And I don't know, it's like a $30 bag and it held up really well. And there's one feature that I'm particularly excited about, I think, which is the fact that it has a pocket a hidden pocket in the back that you can fit your passport or other things in. So I use this as my daily carry to walk around my laptop and it has plenty of space to put a little bit of preparedness stuff. I keep my emergency kit in it at all times. It's not my bug out bag because this is the bag that I'm always carrying and it wouldn't be very appropriate for a lot of bug out situations like kind of camping type situations. Then there are the big, messy, wonderful internal frame bags. I also am not using this as a bug out bag. I would use this, however, if I had to move overland a long distance. If I had to go out to the woods and think I wasn't coming back, I would absolutely use this bag. This bag, however, is really inconvenient for a lot of purposes. It is tall, it is covered in like large, bulky things that will get in the way. I lived out of a backpack like this for many, many years. I lived out of, when I was um, a traveling crusty kid, I lived out of an internal frame bag most of the time. Sometimes I would actually live out of a bag closer to my everyday carry bag, and that had many advantages in terms of being stealth. When you have this kind of bag, at least in the United States, if you're in an urban environment, you look like you don't belong no matter where you are. However, you know, out in the countryside, it's an incredibly useful bag. If you're in other parts of the world and you're young and you have a bag like this, you look like you're um, off to see the world. The advantage of these bags is that they carry weight very well. 
the the weight is higher up it's a better center of balance the the waist strap is just much hardier and they're just actually really wonderful bags for carrying a lot of weight it might be worth having one of these depending on your risk model and now my actual bug out bag i just like this camera angle so i'm gonna try this camera angle this is my actual bug out bag Okay, that camera angle didn't work. My actual bug out bag is a tactical style, small-ish backpack covered in molly. Oh no, you can't use molly. People will know that you're tactical. I don't look tactical, but I sure look weird, no matter what I'm doing. I like this style of bag so far as my favorite. I haven't, you know, I, I just moved to this from the old Green Army one pretty recently, and I'm pretty happy about the transition. What's in a bug out bag? Everyone's answer is going to be different. This is my answer, at least right now. So first of all, remember that the core of this style of preparedness is that you're starting with an emergency kit that is a separate small pouch. And if I had to, and that separate small pouch, like it currently lives in my everyday carry bag, and I would move it over to this bag. On the outside of the bag, I have a bushcraft knife. This is a Gerber knife, and I like it because it has a molly sheath with a built-in sharpener that I don't really use much. This knife, it's not really a fighting knife, it's a survival knife. It has the serrations for cutting cordage, and it has a big thick spine so that you can use it for batoning. Batoning is when you um, chop wood by hitting the back of your knife with, you put the knife on top of the wood to split it. I'll just fucking show you. It also has a pretty solid glass breaker on the back. I feel a little bit more confident about this glass breaker than the little tiny ones that are on pocket knives. Any outdoors or survival knife will do, and it doesn't have to be outside your bag. I mean, it depends. I am covered in knives at any given point, so it's not like I need specific quick access to this one. My favorite knife is the knife I made. I made this knife a couple years ago when I was living with a knife maker. And I said, can I borrow your stuff? And he said, yes. So then I made this knife. It's based on a sax because I'm a Norweebu. What are the, anyway, I like my knife. The only other thing on the outside of the pack for me is a water bottle. And I really like these water bottles. They're the triple tree, single wall, triple tree, wee, single wall water bottles. And the reason I like them is that unlike the double wall water bottles, you can boil water in these. There's only one plastic part here in the lid, the rubber gasket. And so you have, well, I guess maybe it's rubber. I don't know if it's rubber or plastic. There's only one part you don't want heating up and it's this right here. And so you just take the lid off if you're going to boil water in this water bottle. The water bottle, in, in this particular backpack, the water bottle pocket didn't actually come attached and I attached it via Molly. By... I used to not like Molly because I was doing it wrong. I used to use Molly and not actually bother weaving the straps back through and you should look into how to do Molly correctly. Not the party, oh, you should also look into how to do the party drug Molly correctly too. It's important. I also put little attachment points on the outside, but this is just an experiment. I'm, I'm learning more about what neat things you can do with Molly um, besides get high. You know, here's a little key ring and here's a little thing I could carabiner some shit to and here's an actual little carabiner. You might want to put like gloves on here or if you're hanging something off of your bag because you need it to stay outside your bag because it's wet, you can hang them off of your bag in different ways. I used to hang socks off of my bag a lot when I lived out of my backpack because you can, it's not a great thing to do, but you can um, sort of clean your socks a little bit just by exposing them to the sun. You can let the, the UV rays of the sun like destroy some of the bacteria in, in your dirty socks and underwear. Now let's look inside the bag. A long handled spork. I eat with a regular handled spork most of the time at home. It took me a while to be convinced of these, but basically they let you eat out of a can easier because they can go all the way into the can and then come out of the can with the food. A pack cover. This is a 
I mean, you can actually just use a trash bag, but I happen to have this, so I keep it in here. This is in case it starts raining, you can throw your pack under the pack cover and still hike around with it. This is also important if you're sleeping out in a bivy, because in a bivy, you probably won't be able to fit your bag into the bivy sack with you, so you need something to keep it dry. So this, and also honestly a trash bag, and if I don't have trash bags in here, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Cliff bars. Last video I told you about how I don't like chocolate chip ones. I actually do like chocolate brownie ones, so probably I will need to make sure to not accidentally eat these when I get hungry before I bug out. Another one, a spare magazine for an AR-15. The AR-15 is by far the most common rifle in America, and it uses interchangeable magazines, and this is one of them, and it is full of ammunition. And there are many things that you could use a rifle for. If you bring your own rifle, you'll be happy to have this. If you take someone else's rifle because they're done using it, then you'll be happy to have this. Spare 9mm ammunition. Uh, the most common handguns in the United States for defensive purposes are 9mm. The handgun that I carry is 9mm, so I have 9mm ammunition with me. Ammunition is the heaviest part of your bug out bag and might be the least important. It really depends on what you're doing and what you expect to do. For example, if you were to bring one gun for most situations, it wouldn't be a 9mm handgun. Well, maybe it would be a 9mm handgun, I don't know. And it wouldn't be an AR-15. It would probably be a 22 survival rifle, like a backpacking style 1022, and which is a model, because you can use that to hunt. I don't own a 1022. I own a 9mm and an AR-15. So that's why I carry the ammunition for what I have. However, 22 ammunition is substantially lighter and you can carry far more rounds easily. This is not like and a forever amount of rounds. This is just so you have something with you. Next pocket. Famotidine. Maybe you don't need this, but I need this. The most annoying radio that you'll ever be glad you own. This radio has an included lithium battery. It's the Redicus TR-105. And it basically, it gets weather band and it gets a bunch of other different bands. And it's tiny and it comes with a little extension antenna. And the reason it's annoying is it's the most, it's the least user-friendly menu I've ever figured out. And you can really accidentally set your alarm for like two in the morning without doing anything. And then it goes off in your bug out bag at two in the morning and you think that something's wrong with your solar. And so you rush downstairs and once again, it's your radio and you're very frustrated. Obviously that will happen to everybody. Still glad I have this, it weighs nothing. Super useful to be able to hear what's going on. More Bic lighters. A ferro rod and magnesium. This is for starting fires. It takes a lot of practice to do this, at least in really humid environments and dry environments. It's much easier. I kind of hate these things. Basically, the more fire starting things you have, if you have them, put them in your bag. If you don't have them, you don't need to run out and buy store matches. But if you have some, you should put them in. More tinder. There's a tiny bit of tinder in the emergency kit. This is substantially more and would last you a lot longer. Okay, water filtration with taste fixer. I haven't actually tried these yet because I hate chemically treated water, but supposedly these make the taste a little bit better. I mostly rely on a ceramic filter. Basically a lot of things about this bag are the emergency kit, but more of them. Hair ties, they're for tying hair. Seriously, whistles, you should just put whistles everywhere. I'm not sure why I have two ferro rods in here. There's a fly on me. According to a movie, that means I'm about to die. You know, in movies, there's a fly in the person. It means they're about to turn into a zombie or die. I hope that doesn't happen. A full-size Danish axe. A power bank. This is like a sturdy power bank. It's, you know, a survival power bank. But basically, you use it to charge things and charge your USB, charge your phone, mostly your phone. Also, maybe your flashlights and things like that. It's always important to have extra power around. And then this one has a little built-in flashlight. Because why not have a built-in flashlight? I don't know. An extra water flask. Collapsible water flask. These are so that you can fill them with water. Actually, a lot of people fill them with, like, wine. I would sort of consider filling it up with liquor just out of... Um, I don't even really drink, but it seems like in a lot of situations a lot of people might want to drink, and that would be... A good thing to have for people. Maybe it's a terrible thing to have for people. Maybe you should fill it with water. These are for filling with water. Only water. These are P100 masks. P100 masks are like N95 masks, only they do more. 
And it's really annoying to me that with COVID, everyone's like, N95 masks, those are the really good masks. I'm like, no, motherfucker, P100 masks are the really good masks. I'm not gonna take these out of here because when I take them out of here, they'll stop being as good. And they're dust masks. They're just really good dust masks. Useful for when there's a lot of dust or diseases. This is a tarp. It says hammocks, but it's a tarp. And this is a more portable tarp. It's like a, it looks more like a tent than a regular tarp. Tarps, real good shelter. Swear by tarps. A lot of people who live outside all the time rely far more heavily on tarps than they do on tents. Here's camp soap, and it's hidden inside this plastic bag because I don't actually like this camp soap bottle and it comes open and that's bad. So I leave it hidden inside this bag. And also that way you can't see the brand because you shouldn't buy this brand because it leaks out of the bottle. And that's not a good thing for something that lives in your backpack to do. However, I already own it. I don't really know what makes it camp soap. Biodegradable, fragrance-free, and it works in fresh or salt water, hot or cold, which I believe describes soap. I'm not sure. Honestly, next time I'm probably gonna get a little tiny bottle of Bronner's. You can probably see the Bronner's in my background. Hello, Bronner's. That's my shower. I take a shower on my front porch. It's actually really nice, except when it's windy. Bullshit survival hand chainsaw thing in a case that's moldy because I live in a place that's 90% humidity all the time. It's also rusty. I hate the fucking humidity. Humidity is everywhere. This is like a hand chainsaw. And as far as I can tell, and I've like practiced with both this and the wire saw ones, the wire saw ones are bullshit. And then these ones are actually like reasonably nice. You can chop through things with them. I'm planning on clearing this area anyway. So I guess I'll prove this chainsaw, this hand chainsaw works. And also tell you that I will oil it, clean the rust off and oil it because I should have done that in the first place. Instead of blaming my environment I should have thought about what I can do to fix the things that are going wrong. Also, if you ever think about where to put your house, if you put it in the forest, it's really cool because like the, the shade shades you. Wow, look at all that shade. On the other hand, it keeps even when the sun's out, it keeps the water from evaporating. So instead it's humid all of the time. Now the main pocket. This has more stuff in it. Wool or whatever wool-like socks. Uh, cotton kills is the big cliche of the outdoors world for a reason. You want good wool socks. They also help fight blisters better than thin socks. So even in the summer, I would throw these on if I had to hike a long distance. A light plastic trowel. You could use this for digging lots of stuff. You could dig it, use it to dig like where you're gonna put your posts for your building your shelter. The thing that I use this for the most is when you shit in the woods, you need to bury it. It is absolutely the sign of like a, a poser outdoors person. If they just like shit on the ground and they're like, oh, whatever, I'm in the woods. That's how bear shit's in the woods. Like, no, fuck you, bury your shit. You eat stuff that makes your shit terrible and bad and you need to bury it. So you dig a little, it's called a cat hole, about a foot deep. A little trowel, you shit in it, you put the toilet paper or the leaves or whatever in it too, you bury it back up, and then you're a better person. We've all learned to be better people today. I like these more than the like survival camp shovel things that also are pickaxes and also murder people in the trenches of World War One or Two, um, because those are heavy and this does the job of what I need it to do, which is dig small holes. Underwear. This is like fancy antimicrobial underwear. I don't like it. I actually like cotton underwear. I know I spend all my time talking trash on cotton, but from specifically a hygiene and antifungal point of view, which is going to be your big enemy, if you live in the goddamn humid forest, then you really need more cotton. However, just from a pure purpose of this being like really light, easy to pack underwear, whatever. I already own it. Put it in my bag. A camp stove. This is like a little light backpacker stove. It needs camp fuel. I used all my camp fuel for it because when the apocalypse happened, COVID, when COVID happened and I needed to cook in my off-grid cabin and I hadn't yet set up my stove propane, I had to use this and I used all my camp fuel. And so I need to go get more, but it's still in my bag. Socks. Camping cook set. 
Okay, so again, my bag is really focused on if I need to go camping, because most of the super basic stuff I have in my emergency kit anyway. But if I decide that I'm going camping, this is a good bag for it. Backpackers Camp Cookware comes with lots of little things all in a tiny, tiny little container. It's got a frying pan, good enough for one person, sort of, a little tiny soup pan, again, kind of only good enough for one person. And then I will probably never use these like little cups and sporks and bowls or whatever the hell these things are. But I like the cook stove. And look, it's moldy because everything molds in the fucking forest. This is a poncho. It's used to keep rain off of you. Here's my real water filter. This is the one I actually like. This is a Sawyer water filter. And a Sawyer water filter is you fill up one of these bags with dirty water, and then you squeeze it through the thing, and it comes out the other side as clean water. And you can either just put it directly into your bottle, or you can fill up the other bag with it. And you can also just leave it hanging from a tree as a gravity filter. That's what I used. Um, I used one of these for the beginning of the pandemic, so I really like them. I'll show you my bucket. This is the this is the remnants of my water filtration bucket that I used at the beginning of the pandemic. Basically, you take a five gallon bucket, you put in what's called a bulkhead. Bulkhead comes out here. Attach all these little doohickeys together. It goes into a ceramic filter. And the idea is you can just hang it, a little dangly bit like that, and it will filter all the water in it through gravity into usually a five gallon jerry can. These are five gallon jerry cans. This is an inflatable mattress. And the idea behind inflatable mattresses is that they're substantially more comfortable than the foam ones. They are not quite as good insulators. And so my outdoors friend recommends using both if you wanna be comfortable and warm. So I often use both, but this one folds up and fits in my bag. And the other one would have to be strapped to the outside of my bag. So I kind of keep it separate because if I'm getting up to run out the door, I probably don't need all of my big heavy camping stuff strapped to my bag. This is a bivy. A bivy is like a sleeping bag that's waterproof and not warm. It has like one pole kind of, and it so keep it off your face. And basically you can like hide from the rain in one of these. The biggest disadvantage of these is you can't put your pack in them. I've slept in it and it's a little bit weird and claustrophobic, but it's so much smaller than a tent and it's so much more low key. And if you were like, oh man, I don't want anyone to see me. This is a little bit better of an option, right? I'll be honest, as soon as I can afford one, I'm getting a pyramid tent instead. A pyramid tent is like halfway between a tarp and a tent where it usually doesn't have a bottom, although some come with um, some come with mosquito netting. And the only pole that you use are your hiking poles, which if I were taking this bag hiking, I would strap my poles, my sleeping bag, and a, another foam mat or a foam mat instead of just the inflatable one. But the bivy is what I have for now. And I think in a lot of environments, it would be preferable. A life straw. If you've accidentally ever clicked on a video like this, you probably get advertised these all the time by Amazon or something like that, because these are like the ultimate survival tool because you just drink water through it like a straw. And that's true. Uh, they're a water filter that you just drink through. And that's actually really cool um, and could be useful in a lot of scenarios, but it's a really annoying thing if every time you wanna drink water, you have to filter it at the point of like, you know, go up to the stream and drink out of it or whatever. So these are good uh, emergency things to have around. Here's an emergency bivy. It's a, it's an emergency blanket in sleeping bag form and I am not gonna take it out because I'll never get back in here, but it's like a little bit sturdier than the average emergency blanket and a little bit easier to, to stay warm in. And so, and they're a little bit more expensive and they're a little bit bigger. So that's why they make it into the bug out bag and not the emergency kit. And I think honestly, in most environments with the clothes that I'm wearing and the bivy and the tarp and this, I, I would be warm enough without a sleeping bag, but you're always colder at night than you think you are. 
like the first thing I ever learned the first time I slept outside, like unprepared, was that, oh my God, it's summer, why am I cold? And the answer is that you're always colder at night than you think you are. And so sleeping bags are actually really essential. But in an emergency, you can use this. Oh, the sun came out. You knew I had pea cord in this bag, right? Everyone's like, survival, that means pea cord. And so I have parachute cord, pea cord. And this stuff is used as cordage. You use it to tie up tarps. I actually mostly have used it for my laundry clothesline, but you can use it for lots and lots of things. I actually wish the sun would go away so that the lighting would be better on my face and so I don't have such dark circles under my eyes. Go away, sun, but don't rain. Be perfect just for me. And then you can use this for like, I don't know, people are like, you could fall down rabbit holes where survival people are like, the million things to do with pea cord, and, and those are fun. But mostly you use it to hang up tarps and uh, probably will climb things if you needed to. You'd probably need to use multiple strands. You know what? I'm so much not an expert on cordage that I'm not going to pretend like I am. But I keep it around and I do use it sometimes. Wet wipes. Uh, I'm sorry. Combat wipes. What? Uh, wet wipes. They're just wet wipes. And this bag, I don't know, I, sometimes I buy the dumb shit that it really is just fucking wet wipes. And wet wipes are really good. They're great. I love them. And if you can't find a shower, you should use wet wipes. And if you're buying from your home, don't buy these like little travel size pack ones. Buy a big old thing of them. Because if you suddenly don't have a good access to water and you need to clean, you have a big old thing of baby wipes that are in bulk and not combat wipes. It's actually really embarrassing, but I feel like, so I feel like if I make fun of the fact that I have combat wipes, it'll somehow make up for the fact that I have wipes that are advertised as combat wipes. I don't know if that's how it works. Little emergency books, waterproof backpacking books. They don't have that much information in them, but they're waterproof. This one's the pocket guide to, you can actually read, well, maybe you can, maybe you're just actually listening to this. Um, it says, pocket guide to weather forecasting and pocket guide to emergency first aid. I don't actually, I'm not like, oh, run out and get these, but I don't know if you have them. A USB stick. You would actually keep this in your emergency kit, but I hadn't yet put it in my emergency kit before I made my last video. You can put it in your bug out bag too, especially if you have a bug out bag and not an emergency kit. This USB stick, this one, I like this one because it has both USB-C and USB old, I don't know what the fuck it's called, on it. USB-C. USB old. You can set up an encrypted volume on the USB stick on Mac, Windows, or Linux with a program called Veracrypt. And in that, you can put personal documents, you can put photos of your, your passport, your driver's license, your concealed carry, your insurance, um, your title and registration, your mortgage, your whatever, whatever documents you think you might need uh, access to in case you lost the physical documents is a good backup for that. You should keep backup also in a few other places if possible. And the other thing that you can put on here that I highly recommend is put on movies and books and other entertainment or education. When I first started prepping, I, I filled a, a hard drive up with, with movies and stuff, all of course from the public domain, and, and books and things. And I was like, well, I'm never gonna use this. Like, what's the point? At what point are we gonna hit an apocalypse where our problem is that we're bored? And then of course the pandemic happened. There are other things I would consider adding here, especially if you don't keep like an emergency kit around, or also if you don't keep like a, a combat belt around, for example, my, my trauma kit, my IFAC is on my combat belt and I keep another one in my car. But one of those would be a very good thing to have in a bug out bag and actually in increasing the amount of first aid stuff in this bag is, is something that I'm planning on doing. But again, I'm relying on the other places that I keep first aid. Like everyone else who's making these videos, I've never bugged out. I, I did live out of a backpack for about 10 years in a lot of different environments and live out of a van for a lot of years in a lot of other different environments. This is absolutely not meant to be like, this isn't your checklist, right? This is some stuff and some of the stuff that I, I find useful or hope to find useful. Well, I hope to never find useful because most of my plans involve staying right here where I have a lot of water, I have a lot of food, I have a lot of the things I need, except there's too much mold. So use your own judgment. Think about your own threat models. Are you, what are you likely to be leaving? What are you likely, like most things you don't leave from. Bug out bags are absolutely overrated. Bug out bags have a purpose, right? And think about who you would be taking care of, right? I'm just me, so that's a, a huge 
well, disadvantage in almost every situation. But if there's other people around you that you would also be trying to take care of, maybe you bring more of certain things. Because at the end of it, the best resource that you have in times of crisis is other people. And people are always like, oh no, you better run from the other people. They're all gonna try and rob you or whatever, right? And, and maybe that'll happen. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the fuck is gonna happen to, in any situation. But for the most part, being around other people is a measure of safety, not of danger. Learning how to de-escalate conflict is more important than learning how to escalate conflict or win conflict. Even the art of war, which is a very, you know, militaristic document, points out that the way that you win is you don't fight. So take care of each other because I want people to take care of each other because I want people to take care of me. And that's, that's how we'll get through this as much as we will, whatever, whatever's coming. If you want to support me doing this kind of video in the future, please like and comment and subscribe and feed the algorithms that run the world that probably shouldn't run the world. And also you can support me directly on Patreon, patreon.com slash Margaret Killjoy. My main thing is that I run a podcast called Live Like the World is Dying. Well, my main thing is relates to, to preparedness, individual and community preparedness. Live Like the World is Dying, which I guess this is the, the video version of, is primarily a, a podcast where I interview people who know a lot more than I do. And most of this stuff is just the stuff that I've picked up um, through my own life experience or from talking to people who know more than me. What do you have in your bug out bag? You should put a comment down below with what you have in your bug out bag. And the reason every YouTube person says that is because comments drive engagement, which means the algorithms will feed this video to more people. So more people will see it, so more people will click on it, more people will subscribe, more people will like it. And the information will get out there. But also, I genuinely am curious what people put in their bug out bags. And I know that I already have altered my emergency kit uh, a fair amount based on the comments from my last video about emergency kits. So, so please let me know. And also, if you're just here to say negative things about me, please do that. Do that in the comments. Tell me that I'm not a woman. Tell me that anarchy is wrong. Do whatever you want, because those comments drive engagement. And I really appreciate all the hard work that you're putting into making more people see this video.